Hello everybody and welcome back to Planet Zoo African Zoo and we are back here in the franchise mode in this beautiful beautiful environment there I really love the lightning in this game and when you look at that zoo what do you think well I think it does look a bit boring doesn't it like we have one habitat after another one we don't have many items yet that we can use so two things I think are very very important and that is terrain manipulation that we have here already and researching new items, new buildings and stuff like that because otherwise this will look the same, just much bigger over time. So we actually do have one, two, three, four, five, six habitats that are populated now and working. So animals in there are quite happy. The only thing that's missing is a bit of enrichment, so toys they can play around with. And what I also want to have in the zoo is some mountains and hills inside the zoo compound, not just on the edges, and also, of course, lakes and rivers. We don't have that at all. Franchise mode, like, throws at you a huge plateau with nothing on it, and you just can go crazy on it. And that's exactly what we want to do. So when we look at the zoo from above, we have one giant grassland-themed um, habitat in the middle now where we have grassland animals. Of course, those habitats are going to be more um, ornamented than when we research new things for them. But also here we have empty space. And here I want to have a lake where people can go around and where, well, we can populate some animals that use water. For example, crocodiles. So we do have crocodiles. We have just haven't used them yet. And I think this might be a very, very good idea to have that here. So what I want to do first is I'm going to, well, delete that path here again. We have... Um, our staff building here already, so the foundation for that, which is very important. So we can have a huge lake here with some habitats and my staff can just still go into those habitats from behind while my people actually use this way here then of visiting those people there, uh, those animals then of course. That's important, so terrain manipulation. And the second very important thing is something that we don't have yet is researching. So for that reason, we need, we need a few more buildings here. We do need, mm, let's see the workshop. Let's have this one here too. It's close. There's the transformer. We have power and everything. So we have the transformer and there's the research center. Perfect. We do have money, but those buildings are just so, so expensive. Like franchise mode feels like Frostpunk survivor mode sometimes. You really have to be accurate with what you want to spend over time. So we have those two things now. The workshop is for the mechanics and the research center is for the vets. And then I'm going to get two more people into my game here. And that is... Another vet. Hello, you sexy vet. And then another mech. And this mech we are using then also for the research. Now let's open up the research tab. There it is, vet research. And now we see all the animals that we already have in the zoo. So those six species that we have there and diseases that are common with those animals. Quite a lot actually. Lucky for us, we haven't had any of, of these diseases yet, but we want to use some of those enrichment things here so we want to improve the life of those animals here and let's see i think i think the timber wolf might be a very good starter here and what we can see is we are nothing here yet i'm going to assign her the new one i think that's the new one at least um over here and she's researching now the timber wolf now we are researching level one we're still at level two zero here and with level one we do get more enrichment stuff here and i don't know what the other symbols mean so we'll find out i guess and look at that there's so many things you can research more enrichment things more food options then as well so we are still using the basic food not very not very good actually okay so one i'm not going in, into any more research because for that you need the vets and the vets just cost so much money so don't over exaggerate on that Okay, that's the first thing, and we also have the mechanic research, and that is a really cool thing, because there you can finally, finally research new buildings and themes, so you can have, yeah, that's right, you can have themes in your park, of course, so the African theme, so in my, in my case here, this is going to be an African theme area, and then let's have a look what other themes we can have in this game, well, the new world theme would be a nice one, the India theme, I think we can have the Asian theme, there it is, East Asia, so we have a beautiful Asian park as well, definitely going for that classic theme mm, we'll see about that i really there are, there are other biomes like the the european temperate zone i really want to use that then for the classic theme perhaps right now we're at that and right now we could research something we could research something new for habitats here we could research new barriers new food shops staff buildings something new for well power in this case something new for shelters mm, it's a bit difficult of what to go first we have so many mechanics here 
and let's go for the Africa theme. So this opens up a few new buildings here that look like African buildings. I really like the style of that. And also, again, only one vet at this point, uh, only one mechanic researching that because it's just way too expensive otherwise. And look at that. I'm visiting myself. I'm here. I'm visiting my zoo. All right. Can I, can I kind of wave to myself? No, I can't. I can say hello to this random player there and get some conservation credits, but I can't say hello to myself, unfortunately, even though I'm visiting here right now. Now, that's interesting, right? Mm, well, not really, to be honest, but well. Anyway, we don't have any ornaments yet. I really want to play some ornaments here that would be nice, like a fountain or something like that. Mm, nothing there at the moment, but what I wanted to do is the lake, right? The lake is going to cost us quite some money. Let's have a look at that. So we have the terrain here and here Some interesting things. This one here is the most important one in my opinion the push one because with that we can make lakes and we want to have one giant lake here And as you can see it costs money. That's the problem with the lake here So we should be very careful of, of what we are actually doing here Yeah, well, this is really expensive, though. We'll just have to look if that's working out. Okay, I'm still above 6,000, so it's fine for now. Let's just continue. It's getting deeper in here now, as we can see. And also here. And also, oh, no, 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 that just cost way too much. Okay, I need to be careful there. Now, if I put actually some water in that, I don't think water costs us anything. Perfect. Now we have a little lake. It doesn't look like much yet, but it's a beginning, you know, like a beautiful painting that we have. Now, in this lake, we can actually have habitats. So we can use it, for example, for crocodiles. And we can even have the pathway going over the lake. And people all above it can then actually, well, have a look down to the habitat then that we want to have here. So let's try this out. Oh, what the hell is going on here with my... <laughs> look at that. With my poor path system here. It's broken at this point, I think. Yes, quite broken. Let's reduce the length. Okay, so it seems like we can't place any path on that line right now. It's just a bit buggy. I don't know. I think I will have to restart the game. But it's a beautiful lake. And we're going to use that. I don't know what animals we have for aquatic stuff. So definitely the crocodile. Let's have a look what we have there. For those things, we actually have the Supedia. I, I'm, I'm not using that too often here. We should definitely use it more often. It's a beautiful thing here. So we have the Tortoise here. So turtles. For the aquatic things. Oh, we have snakes. I don't think they need water though. Nope. So many things. Look at that. And the cool thing is, you can see where they are located in the world. So there's also a very cool thing you can learn here. Okay, so for the aquatic, there it would, would be a hippo, of course. So the hippo will, will be needed that. And then we have the crocodile will also need some water. That's important. And I think that's about it. So those are the only two bigger animals that actually need water area. Okay, so it actually should be perfectly fine to have this huge lake here now accommodating to that um, end. And what we can also do is, well, we can just have a river then if we want to. So like going from over here to over here to another lake or something like that. Why not? Everything is open here. Okay, I always have to check if there's a visitor because the conservation credits are so important. And many guests still think that the prices are underpriced. So once again, let's go for here and... Increase the prices a bit for my guests. And we have the first research, which is being completed now too. So let's go for it. Vet research and let's collect it. There it is. And the first enrichments for the timber wolves are now active. And do we... No, 
no more missions there though. Because of that, I thought there would be a mission where we can finish it off. But it doesn't matter. Now, let's go to the Timber Wolves. Just need to remember where I placed them. There they are. They're already having offspring. Just running around here now. And for those, I can finally have some enrichments. Let's have a look at that, what that is. Enrichments, there it is. A lot of them, actually. And this is all for the timber wolves. Just to be sure, I want to have the filter on here. And there it is, the sprinkler. And we're going to use that sprinkler here right in front of the people. We have one here, one here. And look at that. Enrichment finally goes up and the welfare for the wolf even more so. Very, very good. And, well, now there ha we have sprinklers and the wolves can play with that in front of the people. And they like that again in return and pay more money. Right, that was a very successful research. Let's start, let's continue researching, but on something else. On the flamingo. And the other vet is going to be researching on the ostrich. Let's have both vets for now. I don't have any sick animals so far. And that is working out. Perfect. What I need to check real quick, though, is the work zones. We do have two work zones. And I want to see. So we have the first work zone is here. And the second work zone is over here. Okay, so that's that. That. And down here we have some other work zones for the guest facilities right now. So that's pretty important for my vendors. So I'm going to select a third work zone which I'm going to say for um, guest facilities or entrance. Let's, let's, let's call it entrance. And in this entrance, we have then our vendors and also caretaker who are then working there, you know, and don't have to run around anymore and anywhere else. So they're working now at the entrance here. And I don't understand how I have so many vendors with high workload since literally there's not that much here that is happening. And also one caretaker for that entrance work zone here. So he can clean up the space there. That's quite important. And look at that. My guests are really happy so far. I definitely should um, improve then on the guest facilities as well and some other point. Here we now have the lake that I still want to enlarge in a bit over here. Right, so this is kind of like an aquatic area then. And there we have then, well, the pathway going over the lake here. And people from up here can then watch the, for example, the crocodiles and the hippos on both sides. I think that might be a good thing. So we do have some money again. Actually, we're earning quite a lot of money at the moment. And I think I need to get rid of the watch here once again. Perfect. So that's really, really easy here doing that. Okay, so let's have this bigger lake here on both sides of that bridge. I mean, it's costing me quite a lot of money. And perhaps we're going to also have a little island there at some point. Just need to fill it up with water now before I do anything else. Right, and the same way we can actually do that here, we could also, for example, have a little mountain here. Look at that. And this just feels so great then at some point when we have all those landscapes coming up in our suit there. But the mountain, I think, costs even more money. And of course, we can use those mountains then as well in habitats. So in this case, that should be done now. Let's fill it up with water. Perfect. Now that's a beautiful lake there. And what we can have here is we can have, well, a smaller little island than here in the middle. Okay, I guess we need to get the water back there though while I'm doing that. Okay, and water back, please. Yeah, small, but okay. 
not there anymore. Can we still increase it now? No, that's a bit that's a bit strange that we can't do that, but well, needs to be even higher. So this is where the crocodiles can relax then, you know. Having this one here. Perfect. And I think in this case, because I want to have the hippos here as well, so the hippos here and the crocodiles over there, um, the hippos will probably need, yeah, they will probably need a pathway over there. We'll see that later. Let's fill it up again. And now we have a little island here in the middle where we can then, or where the crocodiles can then pun, uh, swim around and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Very nice. So that's that. And now let's have the habitat for that. And it's going to be a big one since we're going to have many crocodiles. Oh, we have a starving animal once again. The thing is, um, sometimes there's this bug where the keepers just don't want to feed my animals. And in this case, it's always that habitat here. Look at that. They're bugged out here, those, those guys there. And I don't know why. We probably will need to move something of those, some of those things there away. Or the path here is not, not okay. The thing is, once your animals start to starve, you get the problem that protesters are coming up rather quickly and they're nasty. So I think that solved the problem here. Hopefully. And hopefully someone brings them some food now. Because otherwise my warthogs are going to die. There are the protesters already. Rather quick. Quick about. Let's see. Yeah, nutrition is down. So they are starving now. Where are my keepers? No one wants to do something for the warthogs, it seems. Warthogs. There it is. There's a keeper. Please go there. Yeah, she's going there now. Very good. Yeah. And one of my, my warthogs here died now. Perfect. Right in front of my guests. Another animal died. So that is really a bit annoying there because the game doesn't right tell you when the bug happens. And in this case it was a pathing bug and they were just not getting into that area here. Okay, so I've lost a few of them and I probably will need to buy one or two more again. Let's have a look for them. There they are, common. They are empty, which of course is not possible, because there are just way too many that I see all the time. So this market is also not really working out there at the moment. But we're going to purchase more then. We even have a little cup here, a pup here and growing up, hopefully. So we have two in here for now. Should be enough for now. What is with the research? Ah, yeah. I've got a new research there as well for the ostrich and the flamingo. Two more things there. And, oh yeah, the mechanic takes way more time than that. Let's go for the antelope and the peafowl now. And in the meantime, we can now also place some enrichments for those animals in here as well. So when we go for the enrichment there once again. Oh, the timber wolf can use the small ball as well. So that's exactly what we're doing right in front of my guests. And we can actually see who's happy with um, that item here. So the timber wolf, as we can see. And I, I actually lose $500 because they're protesters in my, in my zoo here. And African wild dog, ostrich. We do have ostriches. And the Flamingo is not using that, that's a pity. I can't find it yet, so we'll have to find a way then. Um, 
Let's see. I, I definitely researched something for the flamingos there at this point. It's the greater flamingo. Let's find him. There he is. Yes. He can use the sprinkler too. That's interesting. Very good. Let's get two sprinklers up here. And they can use waterfall and metal frame enrichment. Okay, that doesn't tell me much. Oh, look at that. It's a waterfall. It's actually a waterfall. Now let's select it and move it over here because I do have a smaller hill here. Unfortunately, I can't do that, but I could do it in water. Yeah, not really the prettiest thing, but I guess it does the trick. Definitely, we do have more enrichment now. Yeah, they do like it. It goes above or almost close to 80%. And the toy enrichment is now at 100%. Very, very good. And the mech has also, the mech also finished his research. Let's have a look at that. The Africa theme. So with that, we get new items now, new facilities for the African theme, hopefully, that we can use. Look at that, some benches, some bins, so it starts out the basic form, you know, some tables with ornaments on it that we can then use. And no buildings yet, so we continue researching those buildings then, or those the African theme items there. But what I wanted to do here is the enrichment for the flamingos is finished now, perfect. And we also have the warthog here. Let's have a look at this one here. What he actually wants. Sprinkler as well. Okay, so let's get them two sprinklers there. And I think that's it for now, right? We do have the common ostrich somewhere. Perhaps we have something for him as well. Yeah, the small ball and the sprinkler. There they are. Let's get them a sprinkler and the small ball here. Very good. That should make them even more happy then. Very good. Enrichment is now at 80%. And that also means that my visitors pay me a bit more money there, which is so, so important. The peafowl. I think we also have something for the peafowl, though. Let's have a look at that. The Indian peafowl. There it is. And the sprinkler. Very good. Also... Let's have three of them here to keep the, yeah, to make the enrichment 100%. Very good. Makes them happy. And also my guests. Perfect. That's that. And what we also wanted to do is, well, the habitat here for the crocodile. We do have the money for it. Now, it does cost a bit of money. Before I, I, I start with the habitat, though, let's have a look at my Mac here once again. He's on the Africa theme there. We're going to keep him there. What I can do is I'm going to put a second mechanic on the souvenir shops. Because I want to get more money from them. That's that. And the vet research. Let's move them to the warthog. Warthog. And the antelope. Which we're already researching. So those two. Then we felt level one on all of them, I think. Nope. The peafowl is still missing then. So that we research all our animals first before we go for another one. And now let's go for the crocodiles. I will need the red brick for that. Because that is watertight. So because that... Um, habitat here is going into the water. It needs to be water tight, of course. And look at that. It takes, it automatically takes the height of it. So that's something that's pretty good. And there we have it, a huge, huge habitat now for the crocodiles, well, the basics at least. And for that, we also need a path here for my staff to come in there. Very good. That's important. And let's have a look at that. Look at my guests, they're just euphoric almost, I have the feeling. And we also want to have some glass, lots of glass. Crocodiles pay so much money. I mean, it's expensive to build it. They, so my guests can watch from here, but they can also watch from up here then. That's the goal. Okay, perfect. That's that. 
let's purchase some crocodile, shall we? And look at that. It did cost me 6,000 almost dollar to build this habitat here because the water habitat is so, so expensive to get that um, those walls here in the water. It just costs a lot of money. And hopefully we do have enough money now for those crocodiles that I want to get here. It's the sweet uh, saltwater crocodile, right? Oh, there's only one at the moment. But it's real cash money, so that's good. That's a good thing there. I don't like to spend my conservation credit so easily. But a thousand dollar was a thousand dollars, you know. That's that's still a, a lot of money there. And I don't think there's any other crocodile here, though. So we'll just have to, to watch out for other crocodiles than in the market. That is still something where I am a bit mixed. Where I do have mixed feelings, you know. That the animal market is online only. So... I don't know if that is such a good idea at all times. Actually, we do have some saltwater crocodiles here for conservation credits. Oh, and we also have... Uh, that's a bad one. That's a good one. Let's take this one. And let's take a third one. A female once again. Yeah, this one's good here. And pay some conservation credits. Never have too many males in a habitat. They're fighting for, uh, against each other. Okay, but we have that now. And let's get those animals. Our crocodiles. And for some reasons, I also can't select more than one. Anyway, let's get them over here. And of course, now that we have that habitat here active, I will also need to assign it to our work zone. So staff, work zone, my work zones here. And I do have the work zone 2, which has now this habitat here in its range as well. Very good. So hopefully no one is then neglecting it. And oh, we don't have any vendor here for a long time. So we'll probably need to add a vendor and a second one here for those two buildings there. While the crocodiles are on their way, there they are already. We still have to do the usual things. So we have to get some donation boxes up here. And not only down here, but also up here. Very important. And there's the first crocodile. And let's see what it needs. It's actually pretty happy from the from the get go. So no, that not that many problems here. Terrain is looking good. It needs lots of water and land. It's got both of it. Um, there's too much long grass though, so it wants more short grass. Let's have that short grass here. And it also needs a bit more soil. And rocks. Let's actually have the rocks over here. And the soil here. Perfect. Now everything is green. This is working out. And for the environment, it wants tropical and aquatic. Let's have a look at that. So tropical and aquatic. I think aquatic, we, we can do that quite easily. Biome and aquatic. There it is. And there we have some of those things. Yep, perfect. And one of them is the Amazon water lily. Oh, yes. I do like that. And this those thingies are now swimming here on the lake. So the crocodiles can hide. Quite a few of them. We also want reeds, of course. That just fits. We have those reeds here. And perhaps we can have a tree up here. Very nice. And also a tree over here. Oh gosh, I love it. You have so much freedom in those things. It's incredible. It really is incredible. Oh, actually we do see the roots, right? Even if it's in the water. I think even then we do see the roots. Let's have a look. Nope. Perfect. Okay, they're gone. 
that's important. A few trees here and there, and of course more reeds, common uh, water lilies here. We have to be careful to not to put too many in there, so otherwise the coverage will go way overboard then with that. That's a bit big. There's a smaller one, perfect. Looks like a, a small paradise there for my crocodiles. Perfect, that, that's it for now, but bear in mind there are more items coming for those things later down. Um, this is a bit of dry area here, so perhaps we can add a, a thing or two here for dry areas. Nope, doesn't look like it. Let's have it down here. Okay, that should be enough. Perfect. Now we have the crocodiles in there and let's have a look at them. Let's check them for terrain. 100%, 100% and plants is also pretty high up there. The only thing now is, as usual, things that we need for them and that's the food. So we need to choose here again the saltwater crocodile in this case. Saltwater crocodile. And they do need a few things there. Oh! That cost me just way too much money, the whole thing. I'm a bit low there on my money. Um, we need a food tray, the large one, which I can't afford. Now I can afford it. And we're going to have that here close to the entrance and close to my guests. There's the food tray now. And oh yeah, I did earn quite a bit of money there again. And the water pipe should be... I guess over here, close to the river and close to my esteemed guests over there. Very good. And the shelters, right. I think since there are a lot of uh, crocodiles coming in here, I'm going to have several shelters. One here in the sun. We could have probably, should we have, yeah, we could have some bedding here. Perhaps they're sleeping on that. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. And let's have a smaller shelter here. And of course, those shelters also need that bedding here. One here and one over there. Perfect. How are you feeling about this, buddy? Shelter seems to be fine now. Social group. Too many adults? You, you for real? This is a huge habitat here, and he says that there are too many. We got four of them now in here. Okay, look at that. People are watching from here now, but they are also starting to watch from up here. That is just cool. I love the idea of that. And with the first real water habitat, we're going to leave it at that. I think that was a nice addition, and of course, everything is work in progress. Stay tuned.